Right now on Weather Underground, a significant flood threat unfolding as Beta continues to fuel heavy rain. Now a tropical depression, Beta's already dumped more than a foot of rain across portions of Texas, including parts of the Houston metro, leaving flood, uh, flooded roadways and stranded motorists. We've got live coverage as Beta continues to produce intense rainfall and the threat of flash flooding continues into the night. And with so many storms and then the changes in severity from forecast to forecast, is warning fatigue starting to set in as this never ending 2020 season just barrels on? We discuss how to avoid falling victim to the fatigue and the storms. And it's all next on Weather Underground. Well, Houston going underwater, at least some of the neighborhoods there are just hours of heavy rain triggering flash flooding. We're going to take you there live tonight on Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. Yeah, we have been watching beta since landfall last night. Now we're with you until 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central as we track the rainfall resulting from the storm. Houston got some of the big downpours today and we had flooding on streets, on interstates uh, or highways. Motorists were stranded. A lot of cars going to have to uh, get pulled out once that water goes down. Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo issued a stern rebuke after they told people not to get out on the roads to the people who tried it anyway. Your sedan is not a submarine. Your minivan is not magical. So stay off the roads right now and make sure you do so until the threat passes. Well, here's what we know at this hour right now, Beta, a tropical depression, but remains a major flood threat to parts of Texas and Louisiana. More than 10 million people are under a flash flood watch, 2.6 million under a flash flood warning. Pumps are already operating to keep floodwaters out of Grand Isle, Louisiana, and 213 coastal flood gates were closed this morning in Louisiana. The storm, as I mentioned, making landfall yesterday, late yesterday, around 10 p.m. local time, five miles to the north of Port O'Connor, Texas. A tropical storm with winds at 45 miles an hour, pressure of 999 millibars. But then it was the rain that really began to get our attention as it the heaviest rain set up over parts of the Houston metro area, leaving plenty of flooding in its wake. Look at some of these totals. Over 12 inches, over a foot on the south and southwest side of town. Even in that 6 to 12 inch range around portions of I-10. So Mike, you get rainfall like that anywhere, but especially in Houston, you know you're going to have flooding. Well, for the latest on that flood, we want to turn to meteorologist Paul Goodlow. He's live in Houston for us tonight. And you know, over the years, Paul, I feel like we've given you know, Houston a, a lot of, of credit for, for what they've done to help mitigate some of the, the flood dangers. It's always an evolving and changing process for them because there's something to learn in every flood event they go through. Yeah, certainly, Mike, again, because this is the water from uh, Buffalo Bayou, White Oak Bayou kind of meet here. And what they've done is they put parkland, areas you can kind of run or bike or exercise uh, kind of around the bayou and made that kind of the floodplain. So when it comes out of its banks, it floods parkland. And you can quickly repair perhaps a park bench versus a university. This is the University of Houston downtown campus. So they want to elevate things that, that people want or have value to in terms of high dollar versus things like grass. But the old saying, Mike, what comes up must come down. Well, the floodwaters came up and they were going down, but then some rain, heavy rain came down the last 45 minutes and now the floodwaters are coming back up. That's a concern. Because the later we head this evening, the darker it will get. And just like last night, a lot of people will be caught off guard. Our producers went out and got us some uh, some dinner during this heavy downpour. He was saying there's tons of people around. There are puddles now forming. This is even low spots by underpasses as well. And we talked to the chief of police here in Houston, Art Acevedo, earlier uh, about that one big concern. It's better to be safe than sorry. That's why the media is out here. That's why the Weather Channel is out here. Just watch it online, watch it on TV, but uh, don't be out, especially once the night falls. Uh, the, sun, the, sun, the sun goes down, you can't see what's going on. So if you don't have to be out, don't. Or if you are going out, if you have to work third shift, understand that. You got to do what you got to do, but you got to find a safe way around. This would not be safe. And by the way, the pedestal of this sign here, I was standing on that last hour, and, you know, it's probably a good um, about a foot thick, and then there's some grass below it. That was all dry. So we have at least seen this come up at least a foot here. And uh, right now we're dry, but the bands that set up here, once they start coming to your area, 
they could train and give you hour after hour of heavy rain. We've had about uh, six to 10 inches of rain here in downtown Houston, and it has definitely shown. Checking the uh, levels here of the bayou, they're in what's called the action stage. They're not quite in the flood stage yet, but they're pretty close. The highest they got earlier today was about a foot from uh, the flood stage. But action stage means you're gonna have some of the grassy areas, some of the parkland, some of the volleyball courts that you have at uh, Buffalo Bayou Park underwater and muddy, maybe for a couple of days. But all this should hopefully recede and move on out of here. But areas south of here, they got in some areas even twice the amount of rain we got here in downtown like places like Perlin. As the crow flies, about 15 miles uh, kind of south of us. In fact, uh, Mike Seidel has been there all day long. Beta has dropped heavy rainfall across Metro Houston. This is the southeast side of town, the suburb of Pearland. 10 to 12 inches of rain, and this is what happens to Clear Creek, way over its banks. The creek is way out there, so you can see how much land it's taken in. You can see it running from left to right. It goes down to Clear Lake out towards Galveston Bay and then into the Gulf of Mexico. But you can see these homes. We've got about five or six homes that have been threatened by the flash flooding. But notice on the driveway over there, the debris line. So all of the forecast right now says that Clear Creek is going to go up another several feet. So far now it's dropped, it looks like about six inches. So that's good news. By the way, if it does get to 19 feet, that'll be the sixth highest crest on record. Put it in perspective, Harvey, the water from this point was about nine feet higher. So there's the water into the front yards of these homes. The backyard's in better shape, except this is Sleepy Hollow Drive. You can see the mailbox behind me to get an idea of how deep the water is. It's expected to crest later this evening, then come down uh, lower and lower and let these folks get back in and out of their homes during the day tomorrow. But there is a flash flood watch into tomorrow morning. So we're expecting some more rain. We'll just see how the rain sorts itself out as the center of what's left of beta comes over Houston and then picks up forward speed and heads over to Louisiana later in the day tomorrow. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel, the Weather Channel in Pearland, Texas. Thank you so much, Mike. And we still have flash flood warnings and flood advisories that are getting extended deeper into the night in the Houston area. And then the problem will expand eastward from there into places like Beaumont, Port Arthur and Orange as our depression sits and spins essentially and only will slowly move to the east northeast. It'll take till this time tomorrow for it to exit Texas and then the remnant low bringing some moisture into the lower Mississippi River Valley. So uh, you're going to remain on the onshore flow side with training heavy showers in the southeast Texas area until that center moves to the other side of you. And so let's go into Houston itself and look at that nasty training band that persists right over downtown and just north of there and up 290 through Jersey Village. That area under a flash flood warning till 11 local time and it better stop raining soon or we're gonna have to extend that even further. And, and the risk will persist all night and into tomorrow for additional heavy rains. But that is definitely an area where you need to stay off the roads because new expanding deepening flash flooding could happen in that area. And we're still getting one to two inch per hour rain rates in that band. So this is still a big time rain producer the last six hours we've gotten about a half a foot of rain extending from downtown Houston northwestward up the 290 that has been the axis of heaviest rain but it is starting to expand farther north and west so if you're in the Katy and Attics area and going northward from there up to the 290 you're under a flood advisory until 11 p.m. central time and this could be a pre flash flood warning if this continues and escalates, the problems on the roads could get even worse. And as we get closer and closer to dark, you got to stay off the roads in that area. And also a flood advisory has been reissued and extended south of Houston in the Pearland and League City and uh, Houston Hobby and Friendswood areas. This is all still under a flood advisory because still could be more rain and because of all the rain that has happened so far and there's going to be more. Now, most of it will not be south of Houston. Most of it will probably be from Katy eastward over to Beaumont over the next 24 hours or so. And some of that rain could be extremely heavy. So even if you haven't had flooding in your area yet, don't think, OK, the worst is over. Everything is going to be receding from this point forward. Other places could start to get rising waters. And speaking of rising waters, we still haven't gotten the onshore flow to stop. So, Alex, we've still got some coastal flooding 
problems that are preventing the fresh water from flowing out through Clear Creek into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, we we still have a little ways to go here with beta and it's not just in Houston, but that's where we'll start. Maybe the positive is it's not necessarily the west and south side of the city that are going to get some of the heavier rainfall uh, totals moving forward, but now the north and east. So, you know, unfortunately, we're sharing the wealth, but now we're getting some big rainfall totals to areas that will likely see at least some flash flood problems. So Liberty east side of I-10 uh, on the east side or east side of Houston on I-10, I should say, seeing some of that heavy rain here into the early morning hours of your Wednesday. I think by mid to late morning, we finally begin to see that heavy rain transition over to places like Beaumont and into parts of the state of Louisiana, but not before we can see some big totals around the east and northeast side of Houston. The areas where you see the orange, that's five to eight inch total, so would not be out of the question to see some areas getting in on a half foot of rain still yet to come. And it's not just Texas, but also portions of Louisiana and even Mississippi going to be looking at some heavy rain showers here moving forward. Lafayette, uh, early morning hours could be getting in on some really drenching rain. That'll follow off to the east. I-10 could see some problems if you're out overnight. Now, the good news is I know traffic really lessens overnight, but if you're out there in the dark in the pouring rain, it's going to be tough tomorrow afternoon. Now we begin to see some of that heaviest rain into parts of central Louisiana. And so rainfall totals could be in that one to three inch range here for a lot of Louisiana. I would not be surprised, though, in the northeast corner, southeast Arkansas, getting into the state of Mississippi, that we see some of those uh, three to five inch total. So three, four, five, even an isolated six inch total. I, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, we look at Shreveport. This is a spot that's going to see some of their heaviest rain showers one round tonight. And then as we go into the day tomorrow, Mike, you can see at least some light rain uh, sticking around. But I think by then, by the time we get into the afternoon, we'll see that move off towards the central and eastern parts of the state. Well, and then just watch what happens to the southeast over the next few days because more of that rain's moving in. There's another fly in the ointment that comes in as well. All right, for Atlanta, you, boy, you have enjoyed an incredible day today. I'd go as far as to say that today, first day of fall, was probably one of your top five best weather days of the year. It's just really spectacular with temperatures about 70 degrees with sunshine. Now, more clouds roll in tomorrow, especially tomorrow night, leading to rain on Thursday. Then even thunderstorms Thursday night into Friday. Temperatures rebounding closer to average, close to 80 degrees by a Friday. Now, as you take a look at what's going on in the atmosphere, uh, there's there's and I really find this split jet stream flow to be really interesting. So just uh, humor me here for a second oh, and I'm going to show you what's going on here because we've got a big old opportunity here for you see what we're doing here Wilson do you have any idea rolling stones yeah. <laughs> Is that, tell me that's not what that looked like when when you look at the oh, split yeah, jet it does like kind the person of. that comes around and says, oh the stones um I was like are they doing a concert did I just I, miss something totally I, um I think they're back touring again after well are they? I think they tried like Jagger had some heart issues he got the surgery then they're going to tour again then there was coronavirus and I think they postponed their tour but well the weather's getting listen, in on it right Wilson, they're still rocking. I think Jagger's like 76 or something like that. Yeah. I, I, I hope shoot. I'm still upright at 76. Seriously. <laughs> Gosh, these guys are a miracle. I just read a birthday card that said, I'm young enough I can sit on the floor, but old enough I need help getting up. And so I can't even imagine doing a rock concert yeah. at 76 because that's I get when I'm you. 76. If I make it, I'm going to be sitting in a chair. <laughs> Not making the boys. They're, I'm they're, gonna be sitting in a chair. They're going. They're going out. <laughs> what are you saying, Doctor Dan? I want to know what is so darn funny, because what Mike just drew is a moist tongue, and that is a <laughs> meteorological term. Yeah. It's an official meteorological yeah, term. Just go there? An axis, an axis of enhanced dew points being brought in by strong winds. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta do that again. Hold on a second. Yeah. That's you, better. You did nail it, Nav. You really did. Yeah. You really did. That's, that's it. That's a moist tongue. That's, that's meteorological that's term tongue. that's in 101 in the glossary. <laughs> I really appreciate you you really bringing it back. See, oh. we're like the doofuses in, fact, in the back of class uh, throwing, no. uh, throwing paper, and Nav's like, hey, you guys, this is actually real. In fact, I played on a softball team when I was an undergrad at Purdue and we had that logo on our shirt and the name of our team was the Moist Tongues. <laughs> the th meteorologists. Am... It was a meteorological <laughs> term. The things we, I, I wish we did not know that about Nam. I really wish. What's so funny? He kept that to I himself. <laughs>
I don't We're going to play the, the um, when we do weather anchor mm. or weather team newlywed game here at the Weather Channel. We're just going to crush it. Our team, we know so much about <laughs> each other. Unfortunately. <laughs> now, what do you mean, unfortunately? Now America does, too. Thanks, didn't, yeah, I thankfully, this, this does, conversation's private. Didn't this yeah. have a song? Was, did, they, did they have a song called Lick It Up or something? Anyway, like, it all, it seems like it all makes sense somehow it, it, with the jet stream pattern. I don't know how. I don't know I don't how. know. I can help you with, like, Selena Gomez discography. All of, all of our... All of our viewers at home are like, they, I can't get no satisfaction, Bettis. I just want the map. I just oh! want the map. Can you do the map, please? You promised oh, me some Oh, don't start rain. me up again, Mike. Oh. There you go. Don't. <laughs> don't start me up. I'll see myself <laughs> out. Is that, hey, Wilson, what color is your dress? My dress? Is it, brown, is brown sugar. There he goes. Yeah, yeah I know. Definitely. I see I was like, brown, you noticed? Total, complete, Spall. utter, Rolling Stones um, nerd alert on the show. I guess tonight. they're giving it to me for the responsibility now of telling you that we'll be back after this with more shenanigans. I'm not... You're watching America's most trusted TV news network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. The Weather Channel. season doesn't stop for a pandemic and neither do we from this point forward conditions will continue to deteriorate don't let COVID-19 take your eye off the tropics this year's threat is more complex and dangerous than ever before remain vigilant pay close attention to the weather channel no one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the weather channel get the information you need to stay safe every day storm safety in a pandemic all season long right here on the weather channel Welcome back to Weather Underground. I'm meteorologist Paul Gilbert live in downtown Houston, and we are now back under an extended flash flood warning. And this is the reason why we had some heavy rain the last hour or so. And it is now the water was going down. Now it's coming back up as that heavy band. If you look at the radar, it's kind of pushing just north of downtown, kind of extending this access basically from, uh, say, close to I-10 and the 610, the east side of the loop, all the way up towards 290. So we're seeing that kind of uh, southeast to northwest corner of that heavy rain slowly kind of meander that way. And that's going to give you maybe a quarter to maybe an inch and a quarter of rain in a short amount of time. So heads up, up towards Jersey Village, uh, uh, Cypress Fairbanks, uh, Cypress Creek, all that area. We can quickly start seeing these rivers and creeks start to rise. Not to mention some of the uh, little low spots, the frontage roads, the underpass like this one here quickly fill up with water and now the sun is going down you've got no clue how deep that water is generally by rule of thumb i say if i can't see the curb i don't venture down that road but eventually you don't see the curb you don't see the sidewalk you don't see much of anything and not quite sure if you can tell with uh, the lack of uh, light here but the pedestal that that sign is sitting on an anchor to i was standing on that just over an hour ago and now the water, which has been rising since, is now up and at the bottom of the pedestal. Now that was completely underwater earlier today. We we're having a lot of heavier rain, but we had some drier spells and has receded. Now it's come right back up. And uh, Dr. Dan, that's the big concern. It's kind of trying to get a handle on where those heavy bands are as they kind of roll across the metro area. We're talking, you know, this is home to like 7 million people who definitely have to be on edge as we had we had another night of rain from Beta. Yeah, not everybody's getting heavy rain all the time, but when it does come down, 
Uh, it's perhaps surprisingly heavy given how it looks on satellite. Paul, let me show everybody way, the way it looks on infrared satellite. Where are all the cold cloud tops? Where's the tropical system? Well, it is a shallow system, but it is bringing in some very moist and unstable air at those low levels. If you look at the water vapor, there's a lot of orange. There's a lot of dry air and wind shear that has been plaguing the system and fortunately has kept it from being uh, more you know, coherent in terms of the thunderstorm structure than it might have otherwise been. This could be a much heavier rainfall event if this kind of structure wasn't what we are dealing with. Because when it was back over the Gulf of Mexico, there was a time on Sunday, if you look right in here, where we had a mid-level eye feature. If that had held together, this would be a much more uh, persistent heavy rain over a larger area. So this could be worse. Now, there's a lot of reasons to compare this to Harvey because of the fact that the flooding that we had in southeast Texas was while it was a tropical storm and we had that persistent onshore flow. But it but Beta is coming ashore as not as strong a system, not as densely uh, you know, packed with convection of a system, but it's still going to do the same sort of thing for a couple of days. Onshore flow, heavy rainfall, a flood event as a tropical storm and now a tropical depression. But this is what has happened so far, but this is what happened in Harvey. So Alex, there really isn't any comparison in the big picture, but some folks are getting flooding uh, and more so than they would think for a tropical storm. Yeah, perhaps some reminders, but when we look at the footprint, yeah, you can see just how expansive uh, Harvey's flooding was. Uh, Nova Scotia, we've got some rough surf out there, all thanks to Teddy. Now earlier a category two hurricane, now a post tropical cyclone. This uh, quickly approaching land and will bring the coastal effects to parts of Canada, but also to the US, even though not making landfall, we're feeling those uh, effects in New England. There's uh, the motion moving to the north going to May. Uh, interact or intersect with land to the east of Halifax, then heading up into Newfoundland. Uh, Dr. Nab, we watched this thing go from category one in the last advisory to post-tropical uh, cyclone Teddy. So we, we'd begun to see that transition uh, no longer showing some of those tropical characteristics, still a, a potent storm. Yeah, and the problem is when something goes extra tropical, it usually gets larger and my goodness, Teddy is a beast of a storm. It's some 800, 900 miles across when you look at the whole area of the circulation of the storm itself, but also between it and the high pressure over the eastern U.S., we have a tremendous gradient and onshore flow that is plaguing the southeastern U.S. And then the the waves that are getting propagated away from Teddy are hitting the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So high risk of rip currents today. That'll continue into tomorrow for essentially the whole east coast of the U.S. And look at the whole western Atlantic dominated by these huge waves that finally will start to lessen as the post-tropical version of Teddy moves off uh, to the north and east. But we are getting some big-time coastal impacts, not a bonafide storm surge event with a landfalling hurricane, but we've got some coastal flooding happening. Maine, uh, the coast of Massachusetts, uh, including in Boston. Uh, and that is just one area of the country. And then that onshore flow down in the southeast has caused some water covered roads here on the coast of South Carolina and Florida. Mike? Amazing to see the far reaching impacts of that, right? Dr. Knapp, thank you. And still to come on Weather Underground. When forecasts change and impacts become Thankfully, less than originally thought, will people still take the next big threat seriously? We discuss why this is a growing concern. At Bare Naked. Millions of people call Houston home and they are in the bullseye for more flooding tonight because of beta. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. Uh, drone view of the expansive flooding in some of these communities. This is Pearland, Texas, areas where we've seen over 13 inches of rain. So here uh, the drone really providing the scope, the extent of the flooding. 
We've seen problems in Houston, places like Pearland, so those surrounding communities, and even neighboring towns like Galveston. Beta now a tropical depression, but rain from the system continuing to fall overnight and into tomorrow. Mike? All right, so Dick, because the rain starts, the rain stops, the rain moves, it shifts from one part of town to the next, so you never really know exactly where that flooding is going to happen. Yeah, this is now called a now casting, as you know, Mike. So it's basically you're watching where the rain is and where it's coming. It kind of gives you a heads up right now. It's moved out of downtown, but moving into the northwest corridor up towards uh, Jersey Village and uh, Cypress Creek and all that area. But take a look at behind me because we had some heavy rain fall here for about 45 minutes or so. It hasn't rained in about 20 minutes, but if you remember last hour, I was standing on the concrete pedestal that this sign was in, and now that is underwater. So here's flash flooding 101. We haven't had a drop from the sky in 20 minutes, but guess what? This water is still coming up. So even though the rain isn't falling, the water is still rising and putting a lot of people in jeopardy and harm's way as well. So it's a big concern. Now, when you talk about Houston, you talk about flooding, we now think of Harvey. We used to think about Allison. Now we think of Harvey. Yes, Harvey was bad, and Beta is bad too, but Harvey was far worse. In fact, I'd probably be under another uh, 12 to maybe 14 feet of water if this was three years ago with Harvey. In fact, I was talking to the police chief, Art Acevedo, earlier about the comparison of what's happening now with Beta compared to what happened three years ago with Harvey. Thank God this isn't a Harvey, at least not yet. But we're worried about what's coming in the next, uh, you know, 12 hours or so. So we're nowhere close to being what Harvey was. But as you can see, we're we're close to getting some uh, major flooding of if we keep getting any more rain. The biggest concern right now is it's dark, and we still have the chance of more rain, more. Uh, streets being roadways being covered in water. We had uh, some major highways still with water, parts of 288, parts of uh, 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 I 45 here covered in water. That's a big concern. And uh, Dr. Nab, we're still watching those bands of rain now pushing up towards Highway 290, another area that is flood prone, is seeing heavy rain right now. Yeah, the Jersey Village area out to the northwest, uh, taking it on the chin right now, and then going straight up north from downtown Houston up toward Intercontinental. That's a part of town that's getting heavy rain now, but there's still a risk for more of it overnight because as long as the center of the depression is off to your southwest, you're going to be in the onshore flow side of it, and you're going to have uh, persistent banding, but not necessarily raining hard at any one spot all the time. It will be an off again, on again kind of thing until the center moves into Louisiana about this time tomorrow. But then we're going to have a lot of rain problems in the lower Mississippi Valley in the southeast. Here is where we've got our flash flood warning and flood advisories. It's all in the Houston metro area. Uh, there's rain happening elsewhere. It just it hasn't been heavy enough and persistent enough and on top of areas that had a lot of rain already. So that's why this flash flood warning continues. And again, the Jersey Village area is up in here. So that's where the heaviest rain has been uh, over the last hour or so. Uh, really, the last few hours. I'll show you in a little bit. Downtown Houston getting a little break at the moment. And that band is a little bit off to your north. But again, as Paul was just explaining, it doesn't have to be raining hard where you are to have the water rising because is the, the creeks and the bayous uh, fill up. Uh, water could be flowing and rising in other places. Getting near two to three inch per hour rain rates out northwest of town. And here's that corridor. It's just like the bands knows where Highway 290 is. It's gone from downtown out to Jersey Village, out to the northwest over the last several hours. And because of that, we now have a flood advisory out farther northwest on the 290, mostly north of I-10 uh, where the problem is. And then south of town, we still have a flood advisory, even though it's not raining hard there. League City, Pearland, everywhere like that, Alex. Still, it's going to take a long time for that earlier rain to drain. Yep. Well, we've got more coverage for you here next on Weather Underground, including more on our top story, that life-threatening flash flooding that still could occur overnight into tomorrow. We'll pinpoint your chances next. We are the Thrive. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. This is what happens when you get 10 to 12 inches of rain from a tropical system. It's beta. It was a storm now, depression. We're in Pearland. This is the southeast side, a suburb of Houston. 
And this is Clear Creek. Now, Clear Creek actually runs out there in the distance. You can see the water flowing from left to right. It all ends up, like most water here in Houston, down in the Houston Ship Channel and out into the Gulf of Mexico. But it is backed up. The height has been up to about 16 feet at last check. That's moderate flooding. But keep in mind, during Harvey three years ago, it was more than nine feet higher. So imagine adding nine feet onto the depth of the water now. These homes will be submerged. Fortunately, there's about five or six homes here and the water going up to the front, but the backyards are in much better shape, but they've got to get access here. This is Sleepy Hollow. In fact, we're hanging on to the mailbox just in front of me. So it gives you an idea. The water's about two or three feet deep. Homes down to the end of the road there and you go around and you get out of the water. So it's this stretch here where Clear Creek is going over its banks. Now they're forecasting it to go up to about 19 feet. That's three feet higher. But here, mid to late afternoon, we've actually noticed on the roads, the debris line, that the water has come down some. So that's a promising sign. But it is raining right now. We have more rain in the forecast, and the flash flood watch continues into tomorrow. So we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, but fortunately, uh, this is not going to be as bad as Harvey. But these folks t will have to deal with some water. And again, uh, the water out of the creek and out of the uh, many of the creeks in this area here on the south and southeast side of Houston. We'll keep you updated. But beta still has to clear the area, the actual lowest pressure in the circulation. So that's why there's more heavy rain in the forecast around Metro Houston right into the early hours of tomorrow morning. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel, the Weather Channel in Pearland, Texas. Well, we know there is no doubt about it. 2020 has been a ridiculously busy hurricane season. We are not done, folks. We've got about 70 days left in the season. Think about it. In a matter of six days, we've had two landfalling tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, with all of that tropical activity that's going on, are you getting fatigued with the tropical warnings? And are we actually heeding those warnings with the same intensity that we did at the start of the season? Well, Gina Esco is a social scientist. She's here to weigh in on that subject. Gina, thanks so much for being with us this evening. We're going to rapid fire questions at you tonight. No question about it. But I feel like this happens often. You know, when, when people go through something over and over and over again, they just kind of tune it out. Well, they definitely can feel exhausted by the number of storms. I'm sure you all are, too. There's some really long nights here. But, you know, people who live along the coast have a great appreciation and respect for coastal hazards. And so they've built this into their daily fabric. They know during hurricane season they have to stay aware and stay prepared. You know, Gina, this is not the first time we've had a really busy season with multiple landfalls. I remember after the 04 and 05 seasons, there was a lot of talk about warning fatigue. Did you learn anything from how people behaved in those two really busy seasons? Well, I can't speak to those two seasons specifically, but what's really interesting is I actually went to uh, Google Scholar today to do some quick searches, and the phrase warning fatigue actually doesn't show up much in current research in social science. I think what it more relates to is past experience, and whether that's in the long past or more recent past, just the last few weeks or last month, Past experience can play a very influential role in people's protective action decision making. You know, Gene, I want to ask you about, you know, just everything that Americans are going through right now from, you know, numerous natural disasters to COVID to, you know, potential unemployment, financial struggles. You know, a lot of times we just feel burdened by it all and something's got to give. How do we how do we focus our energy so that we're focusing on the right things? Well, you know what? I, I think we're all trying to focus on all the right things, aren't we? And it, it is. I have so much empathy for everyone uh, who is going through so many different personal circumstances. Within the weather community, though, the right thing is to communicate those warnings. If life is at risk, we must maintain and continue that consistent communication of life-threatening risks. So I think we've just got to stay the course. We can feel exhausted. Um, I certainly feel exhausted many days. We can feel exhausted, but I, I still believe that the literature would show people want to know what risks they're facing. Um, and so we just have to persist and be resilient. And Gina, with what's going on in Southeast Texas today with Beta, I got to get this uh, topic in front of you and get your take on the continued problem we have keeping people from driving their cars into water covered roads. I'm sure people are in some ways tired of hearing turn around, don't drown, tired of hearing me say don't drive your car into a water covered road, tired of flash flood warnings. But we're also barricades to keep people from getting into that water in the first place. 
I think there's a lot of hope in a, in a variety of ways. I think technology is certainly helping uh, with to stay in routines. And so that way from, from work to home, we know we have that particular route. So it's, it's hard to change automatically. But I have hope that uh, with learning about public perceptions of flood risks, as well as new technologies, I am certain uh, we can find a new and unique solutions in the future. I think we can. Gina Esco, always so great to talk to you. Thanks so much for being with us this evening. Thank you for having me. I want to talk about what's happening across the West, too, because some much needed and even heavy rain working into parts of Oregon and Washington. That'll be very welcome news for uh, parts of Western Oregon, which have been dealing with those fires, including the Santium fire over 380,000 acres currently burned with that one. Now, as we look towards the second half of the week, here's what's coming. We're going to be seeing some of the heaviest rainfall across Western Washington, but Western Oregon gets in on it as well. So some beneficial rainfall coming not just for firefighting, but also for the air quality. Uh, you're going to get a good rinsing. Uh, we've got two to three inch totals possible where you see that darker shade of green to the northwest part of Oregon. One to two inches, though, throughout a good chunk of western Oregon. Uh, very needed, but unfortunately, temperatures likely staying above average across the west. We'll be right back. Get ready. Our most popular battery. Trust in TV News Network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. The Weather Channel. Welcome back to Weather Underground. I'm meteorologist Paul Griffo here in downtown Houston where the heavy rain has ended, but we're still seeing more mist and light rain right now. But we had had some progress with the flooding from the waters here from uh, Buffalo Bayou. It was coming up for a good number of hours today. And this evening, this late afternoon, it started to come back down as we had kind of breaks in the heavy rain. About an hour ago, we started about a 45 minute stretch of very heavy rain. The water behind me is now rising again. Even we haven't had rain for more than a half hour now, heavy rain but the water is still coming up. That's the thing about flash flooding. It's not just the rain here, it's the rain upriver and other areas that drain in here and start to uh, bring up more of that flood water out of the water of uh, the banks of the Buffalo Bayou and then into the overpasses and underpasses and some of the roadways, some of the highways as well, still dealing with the flooding. And that's the main concern, people driving and getting stuck into these floodwaters. We talked to the Houston police chief earlier this evening about uh, just that. We have people that don't get it. It only takes about an inch of moving water to actually sweep you away. And so we've had over 100 rescues since last time I checked of people between us and the fire department that just drove right into the water and aren't heeding the mayor's warnings and all the warnings to stay home. Yeah, the, the sun is set now, so darkness. We're here in downtown, right next to the University of Houston downtown. Uh, they notice that building's kind of elevated, so we haven't had the flooding into buildings like we did uh, with Harvey, which is some great news. But the bad news is we're seeing some rain. The flash flood warning has now been extended until 11 o'clock this afternoon or this evening, and uh, that's been an ongoing flash flood warning, meaning flooding is occurring. That's been extended for several times. It was supposed to expire earlier this afternoon. Now we're talking 11 o'clock, and that rain now, as that pushes farther to the northwest corridor, we're now seeing the heavy rain push up towards uh, the Intercontinental Airport, as well as uh, Jersey Village and uh, Cypress Fairbanks. Those areas now seeing some heavy rain. So wouldn't be surprised to see more flooding head that way as we head on through the rest of this evening. But Alex, we are watching and waiting for beta to come up and on past here so we can kind of stop this onslaught of tropical moisture in the fourth largest city here in the U.S. Awesome. Paul.
thank you so much uh, for your reporting tonight. Yeah, we're going to be watching uh, eastern side of town very closely. By tomorrow, mid to late morning, we finally begin to see that rainfall uh, edge off to the west. And you're going to see that here on the future radar. So again, northern eastern parts of Houston metro area into tomorrow morning, you're going to be seeing some of that heaviest rain stick with us. But by say 8, 9, 10 o'clock, the rain begins to shift off towards the north and east, working its way into the state of Louisiana as we get into the early afternoon on Wednesday. Some heavy downpours then edging into parts of Mississippi. So that's another state we'll be watching for the possibility of some flash flooding. Uh, we could be looking at totals on the order of three, four, five inches. Mike, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an isolated spot hit six inches, but still three inches is going to be enough to cause uh, flash flooding in some of these areas that have been soaked over the past few weeks and yeah, months. It's just been a rough season for us. Really, it's been a rough year and then a rough season on top of all of that, right? If you look at what the, the country's gone through in 2020's hurricane season, hardly any single bit of our coastline has been missed by a tropical system. Uh, look at the top of your screen here. These are the color codes for storm surge watches and warnings, hurricane watches and warnings, and tropical storm watches and warnings. They literally extend from the tip of Texas up to the tip of Maine here. There is one exception, and it's actually right here, southwestern Florida. We've had nada, zilch, zero, nothing. But Dr. Nab, uh, as we go later in the season, Florida becomes the target for hurricanes. It is definitely a target in October. And a lot of the storms that have hit the East Coast and the Gulf this year have been forming kind of near Florida. And so they didn't have a chance to strengthen and then maybe get picked up kind of like a Charlie would in 2004. That's hard to do. You need a deep trough into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, September is generally busier than October. So you might be thinking uh, in Southwest Florida, well, our chances are going down. but. If you look at where things form in October, they can form just about anywhere, but preferentially they're on our doorstep, especially in the Western Caribbean, and then they tend to come north. So that's why historically we've had more hurricanes hit October I mean, hit Florida in the month of October than in any other month, highlighted by the big one, 1921, came into Tampa Bay area and Wilma, 2005. So just because we haven't been hit yet, Alex, in Florida, doesn't mean there isn't plenty of time for that to happen. Uh, it's only, you know, mid to late September, and we got a long way to go. Remind us, Dr. Nett, right? But no, it is a very good point because as we get into fall, we still have to watch for hurricanes. But it is officially fall. Could you feel it in the air? I know I could. Uh, a lot of the fall feelings kick or uh, really peak in October. But we wanted to know what is it about this season that really gets you happy? I would say, like, I have felt just downright happy. My answer is because of the cooler temps. And that is what a lot of you were saying. 48% say cooler temps. Yes, please. The leaves changing color, taking the number two spot and uh, it's not summer. I think what we meant to say is it's not winter because if your favorite thing about fall is that it's not fall, you're a very confused human being. I, I saw one, Alex, I saw one good um, response on Twitter from a gentleman that lived in Florida. He said, fall in Florida is when you lose your balance. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Isn't that the case, though? You know that, Dr. Nam. You lived there. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we had 90s in October in Atlanta a couple years ago. Maybe not oh. this year. Hey, come on, down to work. Beta has dropped heavy rainfall across Metro Houston. This is the southeast side of town, the suburb of Pearland. 10 to 12 inches of rain, and this is what happens to Clear Creek, way over its banks. The creek is way out there, so you can see how much land it's taken in. You can see it running from left to right. It goes down to Clear Lake, out towards Galveston Bay, and then into the Gulf of Mexico. But you can see these homes. We've got about five or six homes that have been threatened by the flash flooding. But notice on the driveway over there, the debris line. So although the forecast right now says that Clear Creek is going to go up another several feet, so far now it's dropped, it looks like about six inches. So that's good news. By the way, if it does get to 19 feet, that'll be the sixth highest crest on record. P put it in perspective, Harvey, the water from this point was about nine feet higher. So there's the water into the front yards of these homes. The backyard's in better shape, except this is Sleepy Hollow Drive. You can see the mailbox behind me to get an idea of how deep the water is. It's expected to crest later this evening, then come down uh, lower and lower and let these folks get back in and out of their homes. 
during the day tomorrow. But there is a flash flood watch into tomorrow morning, so we're expecting some more rain. We'll just see how the rain sorts itself out as the center of what's left of beta comes over Houston and then picks up forward speed and heads over to Louisiana later in the day tomorrow. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel, the Weather Channel in Pearland, Texas. Mike, thanks so much for the report there. I want to give you an update. Uh, before we say goodnight tonight on uh, beta and what's happening with this uh, depression right now, low sitting about right in there, right? And so basically you get the, the spiraling bands, counterclockwise flow around that, pulling in a lot of moisture off of the Gulf of Mexico and flood concerns abound for us here in the Houston metro, including right in Harris County tonight, Houston, Pasadena, South Houston, flash flood warning till 11 o'clock this evening, newly issued one uh, just north of Katy as well. That's going to include Waller County. That goes until 11 o'clock tonight. It's really been that band that has produced rainfall rates upwards of two inches per hour. So this is why we're seeing the flooding in one of America's most flood prone cities. Unfortunately, we'll continue with the heavy rain, especially in Houston and north side of Houston for the remainder of the evening and then we'll likely overnight see more bands begin to set up and that could mean you know Galveston to Houston to Liberty back toward Conroe these are all places we'd be worried about and then tomorrow watching the threat shift over to say a Beaumont or Port Arthur and then eventually over to maybe a Lake Charles Louisiana as well how much more rain still to come potentially another one to three on the north side of town another half a foot as you head eastbound on I-10. Well, for all of us here at Weather Underground, thank you for watching tonight. We hope you have a great night. And remember, together we know more. We'll see you back here tomorrow night.